So why aren't you on Spotify? Yes, you. Or if you are, why aren't you pushing people to your Spotify? You think they're just going to find it by magic? Or maybe you already stream to Spotify and Tidal and Apple Music and Amazon Music and all the places. Or maybe you've put a little bit up, but you're just not sure you see a reason to do it. Maybe you've been holding off, wondering what's the point of putting music up to these streaming services to make pieces of pennies. Maybe you're all about licensing and that's enough for you. But is it? I think we all might be missing the point on music streaming and streaming music services. And today I really want to get into the strategy and also the reasons and then the tools that you'll use to get your music to streaming services where they can be heard by the world. And there's lots of reasons why we need them heard by the world. And I'm going to go over those in this video. This video is sponsored by DistroKid. So I will be talking about that service a little later in the video and why it's got some great tools for you to use, uh, not just to put your music out onto all the streaming services, but also to market your music on those streaming services. And also a sneak peek at a brand new service they have called DistroVid, which we will talk about. So let's dive into this stream. Hey, if you are new to this channel and you're just trying to figure out how in the world would I get all these things done I want to do with every song and I want to put it out to all these places, including streaming. Well, I have something for you that I'd like to give to you. It's just a free gift. It's called the Do Everything Checklist for Your Music. It helps you register, license, distribute, like we're going to talk today, to streaming. It talks about video. It talks about marketing every song you have. This is especially helpful to you if you are a person doing one song at a time and just getting it out there. This is my free gift to you, and you can find it right here at makemusicincome.com slash checklist. I also have other free things for you, like 50 Ways to Make Music Income ebook that I made. It's very quick read. Might just give you some information on how to make more music income. And then I also have an upload to Pond5 free course, how to get your stuff into Pond5 once you are accepted to that library. And much more at makemusicincome.com slash free. It's all free. All right, let's talk a little bit about why streaming is so important. It's worth the work. It's not just doing work for pieces of pennies. I know that's what it feels like, but sometimes it feels like that in the stock music licensing that you're doing too, or even the sync music licensing you're doing. I think there are four major reasons to be putting your music up on these streaming services, and here they are. Number one, licensing. <laughs> now, this is probably a funny way to get into this. You probably didn't think I was going to say it's important to put your music up on streaming sites because of licensing. But when you are trying to get into music libraries, whether they are music libraries on uh, the stock or non-exclusive side, or they are exclusive sync libraries going out to film and television, you're going to be surprised that they're going to want to know where your music is. Are you a music artist that has music out? What is your catalog like? Where is your music? Can I hear it? And a lot of these services are going to want to see what kind of Spotify presence you have. Are you at Apple? Are you out there on these streaming services? It's a way for these libraries or even your clients to see what you're doing, that you're putting music out, that you are, are, are authentic. We'll get to one of these things in a minute. It's a way for libraries or even clients or even music supervisors to go and hear your music and find out that you are really out there doing work for your music and putting it out into the world for people to see and people to find and your streaming. Streaming is how we get sales, which we'll talk about in just a minute. There's also this measure of findability uh, of a way for people to stumble upon your music that they would never be able to in any other way. I don't care if you're on SoundCloud. I don't care if you're in a library even. Will the public stumble upon you that way? No, but they will on the channels they're already on, on the Apple Musics and on the Spotify's and on those places. That's where people are going to find you and you need to be there. And speaking of findability, what if someone hears your song in a TV show or they find it somewhere else and they Shazam it with their phone? And if you don't know what Shazam is, it's a program that you can have on your phone. It's built into iPhones now and you can just click that and it'll listen and it'll tell you where to go stream that music. You 
need to be out there on these streaming services. You want your music to be heard by people who are doing that and finding it and then saving it to listen to later on Spotify or Apple Music or wherever they are. Okay, now let's talk about the second reason, which is sales. Now you might think, okay, we've already talked about this, pieces of pennies. Yes, maybe, but being on Spotify, being on Apple Music, these can be things that bring in music through whatever distributor you use. If you use DistroKid, if you use CD Baby, whoever you use, that can be bringing in income because people are going there because of licensing or because of something else. You might have a song take off in licensing. There's going to be music income then that comes from that, but also the possibility that people will be checking out your Spotify site because they are shazamming it, like I said a minute ago. And that is going to bring in sales income and more than pieces of pennies. I have two good examples of this. One is my friend Stevie B, who did very well with Artlist and Artlist propelled his Spotify. And he did no marketing for his Spotify, but his Spotify took off and now has hundreds, if not thousands of monthly listeners that are listening to his music, all because he did well with Artlist music licensing. Of course, the biggest one that's happened over the past year, the second best example of this is singer and songwriter Kate Bush, who had a song called Running Up That Hill. It was featured on Stranger Things, and it says that she may have earned upwards of $2.3 million in music streaming royalties following that feature in Stranger Things. So it's possible your song, if you're working in licensing, uh, could get into a television show and really take off. And this has happened to countless artists who've had songs on network television shows like Grey's Anatomy or something, and their whole career has taken off. Imogen Heap is one of these artists who had a song in Grey's Anatomy episode, and it just really propelled her career to be what it is now. The other thing you can do, and we'll talk about this in a bit, is marketing your channel on Facebook and Instagram and bringing in audience and continued listeners who listen to everything you put out after that. They start to follow you, and this can bring in continued sales. The third reason I think that streaming is so important is legacy. You may or may not care about your legacy at this point. You may be just like, hey, bring me money. I want cash. I need to make money, and that's fine. But for those of us that are in a part of our life where we're like, okay, how am I going to be remembered? How am I going to be found? And uh, if I just disappear off this earth, how is my music going to live on? And the DSPs, Spotify, Apple Music, Shazam, YouTube, all of these places are going to be places people find your music, whether you're here or not. And yes, it can be something that happens for decades. I have music from 1999 that I put out through CD Baby that is still in music streaming services today because I put it out at one time on CD and then it just got on the next thing, iTunes, and then it just got on the next thing, which was streaming. And so now I have that catalog from way back in the day that is still on these Spotify platforms. And the stuff that I'm putting out now, stuff that I put out 10 years ago, it's still on these things. It's going to be a legacy that lives on. No matter what the next one is that comes along, the next Spotify, the next Apple Music, there's going to be other ones that get into this space and they will adopt all all that music in there. So your music, your legacy lives on. Are you just going to put it on your hard drive and just leave it there or maybe some library that it's hidden way in there and only music supervisors or certain people are going to find that? That's fine and well and good, but you really need to put your music up where people can stumble onto it in 10 years and find you. And this is part of what we talk about when we talk about having a legacy through putting stuff onto streaming services. The number four reason I think you need to be putting your music up to streaming is legitimacy. I mean, this really proves that you are an artist out there making music, putting it out to the places where all the artists and composers and musicians and producers put their music, which is where everyone can find it on these streaming services. It proves you do the work. It proves you are an artist continuing to put out song after song, album after album. It shows your catalog, it shows your range, and it shows you are in this for the long run. It shows that you are legitimate as an artist, as a composer, as a producer. And I think along with legacy, this is just a huge part of why you need to be putting your music 
on the streaming services. The other reason you should be doing streaming right now is because streaming is easy. Now, I've used lots of distributors to get my music out to Spotify and Apple Music and all the other DSPs. I've used CD Baby, I've used DistroKid, I have used Amuse, I've used SongTrader. And while DistroKid is sponsoring this video, I keep coming back to DistroKid as a distributor for a couple of reasons. You pay one yearly price for unlimited releases, which is big for me as I'm talking about the checklist that I mentioned earlier where I write a song and then I am putting that out to a myriad of places. And one of those places is DistroKid. It's right on my checklist and I can put it right out there for no extra cost because I've already paid the yearly fee. The other thing is while that one yearly fee of 20 bucks or 35 bucks or whatever it is for whatever level you choose, you get 100% of the earnings back of everything that is made for you. And yes, you pay a yearly price versus some other places where you pay just one price and then they take stuff out of it forever. Um, this way you pay one small yearly price and then you make 100% of what comes back. It's really easy to use. You just fill out one page right here like this and you are done. It always says at the end of the thing. That was easy, wasn't it? And it is. One thing about DistroKid is it is super quick. I actually released a Christmas album I think I put it up to DistroKid on the 22nd of December and it came out on the 23rd of December. And so it was almost instantly up there on the next day, which really helped trying to get some songs up uh, right in time to share right during the Christmas days. You can also use the legacy option that they have and pay a one price fee for any song that you put up or any album that you put up and you'll still make 100% of all the money that comes in and it'll always be up there even if you leave DistroKid. But one thing that I think is really valuable on DistroKid is the marketing tools. And that's what I wanna talk about next. The first marketing tool I wanna to talk about is called HyperFollow. And I just think that this is a great tool. It's free on a lot of the other services. If you want to use something like this, you have to get a third party thing or you have to pay for it. But this is 100% free as part of your distro kit account. And I use it all the time. I use it to put on to Facebook or social media so that people can go to one link and then choose which place they want to listen, Spotify, uh, Apple Music, whatever they want to listen to, they can go right to where they want to listen. I can even put a player on there and I can use that link as something to do marketing with in Facebook marketing. It's been very helpful in campaigns where I wanted to push the streams and push the channel using something that people could click on and go to and decide if they want to listen and it would take them right to Spotify or Apple or wherever. I'm getting ready to do a second interview with my friend Tom Dupree the third who talks about this kind of stuff all the time. He focuses on Facebook marketing and how to get more people to your Spotify and to your streams. And we'll be talking very soon and really focusing on this one thing. And we might talk about HyperFollow and if he thinks that is a great tool to use for this kind of marketing. One cool new feature that I really wanna talk about on today's video that DistroKid now offers is called DistroVid. It's the easiest way to distribute your music videos to Apple Music, to Vivo, I'll talk about that in a moment, to Amazon Music, to Tidal, and you keep 100% of the earnings. It's only $99 per year to stream unlimited videos, or you can add extra artists for $49 per year. So if you're a label, you could have different artists that you could have unlimited videos going up. And just like DistroKid, you keep 100% of the earnings. It's high definition, which means it's gonna be 4K videos and thumbnails. But here's the cool thing, DistroVid members, get into Vivo. And if you don't know what Vivo is, it's kind of like an official watermark from the Vivo service on YouTube. But what it also does is get you in different platforms like Roku, like Samsung and LG smart TVs and some Comcast applications. You're getting out to places, not just to YouTube through Vivo. So that is pretty cool. You can also easily request a custom release date for your video. And just like DistroKid, DistroVid gets your video to those places quickly. Mine were up in a couple of days. My personal experience with it was very positive 
and I had two different videos from two different brands go up. They created Vivo channels. About the only problem I have was one of the Vivo channels was missing a letter. But other than that, it was a really cool experience and it's really cool to have your videos up at these places. So that is DistroVid and you should check into it. So why do you need to be streaming too? Well, whether you use DistroKid or not, whether you are desiring to be an artist or not, whether you think you're going to have a million streams and just make tons of money from it, you need to get your music into Spotify, into Apple Music, if nothing more than for your licensing, if you're into licensing, for sales, if something should take off in licensing, for your legacy as an artist, as a composer, as whatever you are musically, and for legitimacy. So people can find you and say, you know what, this is somebody we need to work with. They've got a nice Spotify page and love their music and that's how I know that they're not just in this throwing songs at the libraries and stuff. They are actually also on the streaming services. They are a legitimate artist. 30 years ago, legitimacy meant having a CD. 50 years ago, legitimacy meant having an album. 100 years ago, legitimacy meant having an album. <laughs> Albums have been around a long time. But today, being found by listeners on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, Title, Amazon Music, and all the other services is how people know that you are a legitimate artist that should be taken seriously and how you will be found and sometimes remembered for what you did with music. It's where the ears are listening, folks, everywhere around the world. I believe in it. And my aim for all the songs that I'm able to put out on Spotify legally because of contracts with licensing and things like that is to get everything out everything. I want to get everything out to streaming services so that not only do I secure my legacy, I can show legitimacy, but I just want to make sure that all my stuff is out there and that possible stream of income is out there. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Also watch this video and let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.